Okay, let's go to the Black Share matter. Shana Marie Black Share. Date and time set for sentencing. And this is in CR 22209. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Caleb Wagner on behalf of the state. No, no, come on out. This is the date and time set for sentencing. The records show the presence of the defendant. Our advisory council is here. And Mr. Wagner, are you appearing before the state? Yes. This is the date and time set for sentencing. Good um, excuse me, how are you doing? No, I'm talking now. Okay. Listen to me. Is your true name and your complete name Shana Marie Blackshire? The court lacked jurisdiction over the subject matter. What is your date of birth? The court lacked jurisdiction over the subject matter. The court will accept the, well, the court, uh, based upon a verdict, a verdict by the guilty, of guilty in this case. The court lacked jurisdiction over as personal result, addiction. Uh, as a result of a jury trial, the court finds the defendant is guilty in CR 22202, excuse me, 22209. Count one, unlawful flight from a law enforcement vehicle, a class five felony. This is in violation of ARS 28624C, ARA. Y'all cannot force me to get sentenced. Yes, I can. I ARS 28622, ARS 28622.01A1, 28624C, 28301, 28304, 283305, 283315, 13701, 702 and 801. The, the date of the offense was on or about February 5th, 2022. The, the offense is non-dangerous and I'm finding it non I'm finding it non-repetitive for reasons I'll state on the record. Count three. Count three that she is guilty of count three, criminal damage, a class one misdemeanor. It's in violation of ARS 13 1602 A1. 13601, 13, 13, 13, 13707, 13802. And she's also guilty of count four, burglary in the second degree. This is a class three felony in violation of ARS 13, 1507A, 13, 13501, 701, and 702, and 13801. The date of the offense was on or about February 5th, 2022. It's the judgment of the court that she's guilty of count five, resisting arrest, a class six felony in violation of ARS 132508, A1, 13701, 702, and 13801. The date of the offense was on or about February 5th, 2020. Excuse me, advisor. Why are they allowed to do such things? 2022. The offenses are non-dangerous and non-repetitive. The reason I'm finding them is the microphone off, Louis. By the way, turn it off. Excuse me, that's illegal. Y'all can't right. do that. No, that's on. No, turn yes, it off. Yes, it is. Just. Oh, off. Thank you. All right. So Sir, the offenses are non-dangerous. I'm finding them non-repetitive. I'm finding you're you're your own lawyer. He's not your lawyer. He's nothing going to do it. I'm finding that they're non-repetitive because I believe that. Um, these cases, all these, all of the charges in this case, and in CR 2022-208, which is the prior case for which the defendant was convicted, um, these cases all could have been, all of those charges could have been brought together and tried together, uh, but they weren't. I'm not criticizing the decision. It is what it is. It happened for independent reasons, but I'm finding that they are not repetitive. All right. So. Um, Mr. Wagner, do you want to be heard on behalf of the state? I do, Your Honor. Right here. I refuse to um, proceed. And if the victims wish to be heard, uh, we have, have victims here in the courtroom, a victim, I think, I'm not sure. No, Your Honor, no, she's outlasted not. the victim. She's outlasted the victim. Do you wish to be heard? The victims have had to return back to their homes in Oregon, and they're not, they're not here, which is a detriment to them. They had as much a right to be here as she did for sentencing, but she is her own attorney, and she's drugged us out long enough that the victims aren't here to give a statement today. Right, so y'all can't do that. Y'all cannot force me. Y'all can't me like this. 
Ms. Blackshire, I, I believe that these are repetitive and that she should be subject to the Category 2 repetitive offender statutes. She committed these crimes. She was taken into custody for the first crimes, the, the 208, Your Honor. She was taken into custody for 208. She made bond and was released on, on bond. And then she committed these separate offenses I, I mean, uh, this, while on felony pretrial release. I, mean, just, I just want to make clear, to save your words, I do intend to, uh, to impose the enhancement of two years for the crimes being committed while on release. So I just want to... All right, thank so you. If there was any honor. confusion about that, I wanted to straighten it out. I apologize for interrupting you, but I thought it was something to clarify up front. This is illegal! Um, I, I believe that it's more than warranted. She was, she was sentenced. Those were separate cases. She was released from those cases, and she committed the new case. Not only did she commit these crimes separately from the other crimes, um, these crimes significantly, especially the burglary, I believe substantially affected the victim. Um, the victim, the owner of the property um, at Morningstar Ranch. Um, yes, she was burglarized before. Um, no real property was taken from there. As you heard, you, you sat through both trails. But in this case, in this burglary here, count... Count four, Your Honor. Um, the defendant confronted the victim at her home and has substantially affected the way the victim feels about her safety and security at the home, which I, I think is very important, Your Honor, to acknowledge hold on, hold on, that. Sorry. I'm getting... What's that? Are you going to No, I'm talking to the... I'm talking to you. Why, why are you taking her up? You're not. Okay. But I don't want to be in here. Stay in Oh, you're bringing the chair in. Okay, that's fine. I apologize, Mr. No, that's no. fine, Your Honor. I was getting signals from the defense. That's fine. Um, I also would point out to the court that the unlawful flight from law enforcement. I stand by. I'm going to, apparently they're going to restrain her and bring her back in. Thank you. All right. All right. Defendant is back. You may continue, Mr. Wayne. Thank you, Your Honor. I would also point out to the court that count one, the unlawful flight from law enforcement, and count five, the resisting arrest counts are not in any way connected with the prior felon, uh, the 208 case. Um, they're separate victims there. These are definitely separate incidents. The state, the state would argue that as well for count four, the burglary, Your Honor. If I could have just a second, Your Honor. What's the, statu I, what's the statutory reference to the two-year enhancement? I can't remember that. It is, um, I'm sorry, Your Honor, it is 708D. And I don't know that I made that entirely clear, but it just, whatever the sentence, the court pres prescribes each sentence gets a two-year enhancement. Is that, is that ARS 13708D? Uh, yes, I'm sorry, ARS 13708 but not, but not as to the misdemeanor, obviously. Not as to the misdemeanor. I concur with the misdemeanor um, assessment that probation had that it's just time served in the county jail, that she's already fulfilled more than the requirement for that. Um, I, I agree that the presumptive terms are warranted in the other cases as well, Your Honor. Um, I would point out that um, the jury by them, well, during the aggravation phase, the jury found four aggravators. Um, they found four aggravators. We have no mitigators here that I can see. Um, even with all of that, I would still ask for the presumptive terms as a Category 2 repetitive offender with the enhancements for the 13708D. I think that these charges probably would be warranted to run concurrent with each other, but I do feel that they should run consecutive to the defendant's prior case. 
Um, she caused more harm and more emotional stress to the victim, the owner of the property, and then we have separate um, separate victims as to the resisting arrest charge and the fleeing from law enforcement charge, Your Honor. I don't have anything more to add than that, and there's no victim's presence. There's some representatives, some neighbors, some people from the Morningstar Ranch that are are still living in the area. Um, they're present here today just to watch, I suppose. Very well. Thank you very much. All right. The court imposes a sentence as follows. Uh, as to count one, unlawful flight, a uh, class five felony. The court, as I said, finds the uh, offense to be non-repetitive, non-dangerous. The court imposes the presumptive term in the of 1.5 years in the Arizona Department of Corrections. The court imposes an additional two years sentencing enhancement because this offense was committed while the defendant was on pretrial release, and that's pursuant to ARS 13708D. So the total, the total sentence as to count one, class five felony, is 3.5 years. As to count two, this is the misdemeanor criminal damage. The court imposes a, a, a sentence of time served. As to count four, again, the court finds this to be non-dangerous and non-repetitive. This is burglary in the second degree. Class three felony, the court imposes the presumptive term of three and a half years. The court also imposes the sentencing enhancement pursuant to 13708D of two years. So the, uh, the total offense level, excuse me, the total sentence for count four is 5.5 years. As to count five, resisting arrest, it's a class six felony, non-dangerous, non-repetitive. The court imposes the presumptive sentence of one year. The court further imposes the sentencing enhancement as required by law under ARS 13708D for a total for two years for a total of three years as to count five. Um, the court the court further designates that the, the sentence imposed on counts one and five are to run concurrent with each other. Uh, that is the um, unlawful flight, and the resisting arrest. The sentences in quotes counts one and five are to run concurrent with each other. The sentence imposes on counts one and five are to run consecutive, are to, run consecutive to the sentence imposed on uh, count four, which was five and a half years as to burglary in the second degree. So the sentence imposed on counts one and five is to run consecutive to count four. Um, the court imposes uh, the sentence imposed on count four in this case, which is burglary in the second degree of five and a half years, is to run consecutive to the sentence that was imposed in case number CR 22208. Right, so the sentence imposed is to count four in this particular case is to run consecutive to the sentence imposed in case number CR 22. 208. Um, that's because this defendant was uh, released in the prior case, 22208, when it was a justice court case. She was released um, when she posted bond on July 7th, 2021. She failed to appear and a warrant was issued for your arrest on October, on October 20th, 2021. The events in this particular case are alleged to have occurred, I believe, on February 5th, 2022. So the events that happened at the Morningstar Ranch that were the subject of 22208 um, are alleged to have occurred on, on the dates up. Uh, those were alleged to have occurred back on June 12th, 2021. So the prior case, the burglary, alleged to have occurred on June 12, 2021. The fraudulent schemes in 22208 was alleged to have occurred on or about July 6. She was found guilty of that of the, of, by the jury. So she was charged with that case, released, went out and committed uh, basically new offenses relating to the same properties. For those reasons, the court runs the sentence on count four consecutive to the sentence imposed in kind court number, case number CR 22208. You got all that, I think? All right. Um, any bonds uh, are posted, are not exonerated. Um, they will be um, subject of a justice court forfeiture action um, or a forfeiture action in this court as whatever the case may be. So the bonds are not exonerated, but any warrants are quashed. Following the prison sentence, the defendant is to serve a term for community supervision 
of one day for every seven days of the sentence imposed. Did you wish to, well, I'm not going to ask you whether you wish to address the court. You've clearly indicated you're not capable of doing that and following the rules of the court. You have the right to appeal the judgment of the court. If you wish to appeal, you must file a written notice of your intent to appeal, and you must do that within 15 days of today's date. Otherwise, you will lose that right. Ms. Blackshire, do you wish the court to appoint an attorney to represent you on the appeal? No, he's, he will not be representing you on the appeal. Do you wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you on the appeal? If you cannot afford to pay one, the court will pay the cost of an attorney to represent you on appeal. That will include the cost of the lawyer's legal fees and legal costs. You will not have to pay anything. Do you wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you on the appeal? No. They're, this, appeals are specialized uh, actions, and uh, they're very, Court of Appeals is, is very sticky with their rules. They're very strict, and uh, it's a real specialty with someone who knows how to write good appeals. I met with you before when you were here before, and we met in chamber, not in chambers, but in the uh, holding cell area. It's all on the record, what I'm referring to, and I advised you that it really is in your best interest, I believe, to have a lawyer represent you on appeal, and you indicated at that time that you don't want a lawyer to represent you on appeal. I really encourage you to do it. I think it's in your best interest, but it's your choice. Okay. Um, your excuse, you remain under the custody of the, of the sheriff to be delivered to the Arizona Department of Corrections to fulfill a sentence. How, how, how what? Time hold on, hold on a second. Time? What? How much time did he give you? You just said a whole bunch of numbers. Yeah, you can take them. Your excuse, thank you. Good luck. All right, um, I'm not having the defendant step forward to sign for notification of her rights um, and to sign the judgment in this particular case. She's consistently throughout all the proceedings in the justice court and in this court as to uh, whenever required to do so or asked to do so, refuse to sign anything. So that would, be a, that would be fruitless to ask her to do that. But the record will reflect that I've advised her of her right to appeal, the right to have an attorney represent her on appeal. And... Um, I think that's all we're going to do. And, and I don't see any point in having her trying to sign these documents. That's just not going to happen. I don't. Either. I think it would just be disruptive to the court proceedings. Okay. Anything else? All right. We're adjourned. Thank you all very much.